Hello and welcome back to Farming Simulator 22 on Bally Spring. Alright, so I think we're in now episode 19 and we've moved over to November day one. Originally, in the last episode, my plan was to move to the last day of October and actually get into the field we'd planted in the canola or the rapeseed, depending on what part of the world you are and where, what you're calling that. I know that is rapeseed, so I just I say canola just in case you don't know what the rapeseed is and what I'm referring to, but Usually if I say canola and then rapeseed, it's referring to the same crop, obviously. Uh, but yeah, in the UK it's called rapeseed, but I know in game it's called canola, so I don't know if that's something to do with where you're based on from in the in the world, I guess. Maybe it's canola in other parts of Europe, possibly, or even in America. It'd be interesting to know if what the reason is for that. So if you do know and you and you are from another part, you know, of the world. Let me know in the, in the comment section because I actually really would be interested to know the reasoning why it's called canola in game and I know it is is rapeseed. So I completely digress there from what I was going to say. So yeah, my original plan was to get out in the field in October day three. So we planted in the rapeseed in the big combined field that we've got and I wanted to do the rolling. So I obviously progress time early morning it was October day three but the rain was starting to fall and it didn't stop so I thought well I can't get out in the field and my problem now has been that the crop is sprouted and we no longer can roll so we're gonna lose that five percent increase but there has been a positive to it the good thing about it is we've now got some weeds that we can tend to by using a mechanical weeder because they're only small so the mechanical weeder that we've got, we can now tend to the weeds and we don't take that big hit if using herbicide on our yield. I think it's like 15%. That, I could be wrong on that, but I'm pretty certain it is 15% of a hit on the yield by using herbicide. Or it could be 15% hit if you've got weeds. Or it could be like up to 30. I can't remember. I think it is 15% though you take a hit on if you've used herbicide in a field. So the good thing about it now is we're not going to take that hit. Yes, we've lost the 5%. That would have been really good. But at the end of the day, we can still, you know, mechanically get in the field and sort out these weeds. So we're going to do that in this episode. We're going to get that sorted because we are pretty much now waiting to progress into like March, April time so we can plant in all the maize, maize fields that we've got, which is three because we're going to be doing CCM in one of them. And then we've also got the potatoes that I'm really looking forward to that we're going to start planting as well. So grass is nicely, you know, taken. That's that's now growing. So we're going to make, again, a lot of grass. That's all been sorted out. Precision farming wise, if we have a little bit of a look at it, because it did reset, like I said, when I moved over to the update uh, version of the map. So one thing I'm looking forward to is all this loam. I mean, I don't know. If the guy that made this map watches my series, but if he did, I have to take my hat off to you. Thank you loads, because from what I've seen of the actual precision farming soil map for this for this map, it's really just in this corner where I am is the loam, which is obviously 125% potential yield, the maximum we can get. So we should be raking it in. So yeah, I don't know if that is because someone's watched my video. I don't know. I really haven't got a clue, but if it is, Thank you. That's obviously going to come in handy. Um, definitely is a is a positive in itself. But uh, I mean, you can't complain, really, can you? You've got the best type of soil with precision farming. So I think we need to start making the most of the environmental score because we're going to be bringing in a lot more crop now. So yeah, you can see that we're at 57 really on everything. This one's gone up 62 just because we were in that field and did a bit of work in there. Technically, I don't know how it's going to be with that because obviously I replowed in that field. I don't know if it's going to count as the fact. I've been direct seeding after it. I'm hoping it has because I still use the direct seeder. Um, 
I don't know. I don't know how that's going to work. I really don't. Um, so, now I will have to have a good look at it, really, because I'm hoping the plan is after we've obviously harvested all this crop is to mulch and then direct seed in. So skipping out any cultivating, any disc arrowing or anything like that. I have got a subsoil or a disc arrow, that kind of stuff, so we can do it. But if it means I get the maximum environmental score, there's just no point. We may as well mulch, which obviously gives us an extra 5% as well. Then we should, you know, use a direct seeder, plant in again, roll if you get the chance. And then ideally, you'd be using a mechanical weeder. I think that's the best way around to get the maximum yield, but obviously... If you want the best environmental score, you're supposed to be using spot spraying technology within a herbicide sprayer. So, I mean, it swings and roundabouts. I'd rather have probably the best, I don't know, it's a difficult one, because if I get the best environmental score, I'm obviously going to be making most of my money on milk. So would that have a bigger impact? It'd be really good to know that. Because I'm selling more milk, I'll get more money from the milk with that bonus. Is that a bigger source of income long term than what it would be if I max out my yields with a little bit less of environmental score it's one of them isn't it i mean it'd be interesting to know that so maybe we could try and test it out as the series progress just just a little bit just to see if it works uh, but yeah you can see that ph levels are all sorted in each field nitrogen levels again grass fields are all fine that that i know it looks like that's got hardly any on but that is it at the required level um, that's how they started off these two, so I didn't have to really do anything in them. It was just 108 and 103, tiny amount of nitrogen, so a tiny amount of uh, solid fur that I put on that, and that was fine. And then, as you can see, seed rate is where I've been in. So it's good to know that we get a really low seed rate, which is why I wasn't using many of the, the canola seeds, because obviously with us being... It's a weird one, that is. I wonder why in that section... So it seems like loam for canola seeds is actually really low seed rate. So not only does it give you high yields, it also reduces the cost of the amount of seed you need, which is pretty crazy. So you can see with grass, that's not the case. It's just standard. Um, but yeah, canola, great crop, obviously, especially if you've got loam, because you're going to be making more money and spending less on the, you know, the seed to go in the ground. So that's uh, good to know. But yeah, we're going to sort this out. We'll have a look here now quickly, just to see the weeds... Ah, oh, there you go. You can just see it's all the, the lowest green level there. So that's our chance to get in quickly with the mechanical weeder and sort that out. And then obviously everything else is pretty much just the waiting game. Um, it, we have got to sort the cows out. We are going to bring them back in. And I'm also going to do a feed mix just before we do start. First, we're going to go down to... I'm hoping that's just worked. Nope, let's try that again. Yeah, we're going to go down... There we go. There we go. We've got it work now. So it should just change there. Yeah, we're going to go down to the store. I brought the tractor with me because we've obviously got a few items that I've left there. We're going to bring back. But we're going to buy... Well, hopefully we're going to buy two things. Now, I say hopeful because... One of the items I, I tried to, to edit just to increase the volume or the amount of milk it's basically got. And I had a bit of an error with it. So it kind of crashed the game. Now, that could be just because of the way I've edited it, or it could be that with the mod being a, actually on King Mods, and it states that it's not a finished mod. It states that it's like, you know, beta. Um, I'm just interested. I just don't want the game to crash again, and then we have to obviously boot out, start recording again, and so on. Uh, but it's, it was sent to me kindly by Chris from my Discord. Saw the video that I was saying it'd be really good if we could get like calf milk, or you know the milk replacer is the powder form that farmers use. And there is actually just small bags. They're only 25 kilogram bags. It's a shame because you can't get it in a pallet format, which is why I tried to increase each bag from 100 liters of milk to around 500, because then I could just feed one bag to each igloo, and that should be sufficient. So. I obviously changed that and got a few errors and then I decided just to revert back to the way the mod is so it's a hundred, hundred uh, litres sorry per 25 kilogram bag so we're going to try and get just a couple but the problem is when I buy it I get stuck in the shop uh, it, it's either something I did or it, the mod itself the way it is conflicting it could be anything really but it is the, I think the, the guy who made the mod it was made for Hofbergman so um, farmer Andy's map Hofbergman with the 
calves and stuff. I think it's uh, made for that map itself. But we'll give it a go. We'll give it one more go just to see. I just hope it doesn't uh, crash. And if it does, I'll show you in-game. I'll just keep it all in there, and then obviously I'll just have to start recording again. But for you guys, it'll just be a bit of a jump cut. And you can see that... Uh, We'll have to just keep that out a bit, just just to see if it's conflicting with something I've already got on the on the save game mod wise. But we are going to go down there because we do need some straw as well. So I'm going to get some mini straw bales. That I've already bought. I've already purchased them. They're out, they are waiting for us. We're going to put them onto this trailer. Which again, I haven't spoken about this trailer, but I did have one on lease. A bit of a low loader that I was using to haul the wool. Now what I decided to do was return that and then purchase this because it was only four thousand. And obviously with me having the L two hundred. Um, I can use it just to go up to the shop and haul things. The L200 as well, that's been updated on Mod Hub recently. Um, it's, still, it's obviously Lizard in the Mod Hub store, which I get so it can go on console and everything. And I put in my own little kind of, it wasn't the best quality, but I put a Mitzi badge on the front and then on the steering wheel. Because it's obviously updated, I've got to then redo that now. So I'll make sure to do that. And I'll try and do it a bit better this time so it doesn't look as kind of flat. I think that was the problem, it just looked too 2D on the front, which I know the Mitzi badge kind of extrudes out. So, um, yeah, I'll try, I'll try to get that a little bit better this time. Yeah, we're nearly here. Um, we're going to bring back the mower with the tractor on the back. And uh, I think there's a front weight as well, so we can bring that back. And then that big bag there of canola seeds, I can probably hopefully fit on here. If not, we can put it in the back of the cab on the, the R200 itself. I've also got a shovel. So the, the shovel that I lost, that I didn't lose, that just respawned over here for some reason. There's that as well. We can try and sort out. Um, where's the best place for this? I mean, it would have been easy just to get out and uh, sort that out myself, but what we're going to do, I'm going to drive back the mower because I think that's probably going to be better to do with it being quite a wide mower on them country lanes. We'll take care of that. So let's get hooked up to this. Get it all set up, and then we'll sort out loading up the trailer with everything that we need. Right, so the last load going into the, the trailer. I have put the, the big bag in the middle, and I threw the, the shovel into the back of the R200. Uh, but I think that should be enough. I mean, I'm hoping that'll last us for quite some time, really. Let's go put this back. I did spawn this in, again it's another item that we don't own but it's to the shop just because the obviously the, the forklifts don't have the spikes and we really do need a bit of spikes when we're buying bales and I think we're not going to bale up straw ourselves in that kind of fact, form factor we're going to make sure that we just buy it in when it's small like that I mean it's only cheap, it's, uh, you know, it's not an issue at all right so, next task is always good practice, let's save the game and the reason I say that, because if it crashes and I have to do all that again, well, we've all been there. It's a pain in the backside. So let's save the game properly. And then we're going to go try and get this product. Uh, I mean, I'm hopeful that it was just something I did, but uh, you never know. So it's this here, calf milk powders, calf milk powder, 100 litres, 25. Really nice texture on it, as you can see. So we're going to just get four of these. We're going to buy them. And then we're going to try and... Well, that worked that time. So maybe it was something I was doing. But yeah, there you go. So we've got, technically here, 400 litres. Now, obviously, you know, for, because they come in single, we need to carry them like this. It could be a bit of a pain. I'd like it as a pallet, ideally. That'd be just perfect. Because then I can pick up a few pallets, 2,000 litres each one. You know, I'm putting in 500 litres the way I've set it up in the egg glue. 500 litres of cow will pretty much last them for six months just because I've got it set up where the calves don't consume as much milk, which, the you know, in comparison, they probably, you know, consume a bit more than that in real life. But with it being, you know, quite a task to just keep constantly maintaining your calves in game, I've had it so we do it once and that's it, the sound that you can leave in there and then eventually we get to the point where we're going to obviously take them out and put them in with the heifers or the way we've got it set up. Uh, but we're going to try and try it out just to see if, you know, it's, it's easy enough. And then if I can increase it without obviously bodging it like I did last time, then we will do that as well. Um, let's uh, start that. We need to 
put them on there. I don't know if that will have an effect on the shovel. The shovel will probably just be flying about. Let's lift this up. There we go. And off we go. All set up. We're going to set up like follow me with this, like I said. But we've pretty much picked up everything we need for the calves. Obviously, milk, I think that's a... Didn't like that, did it then? But yeah, milk is obviously something we can do ourselves anyway. Um, I think I've actually got quite a bit of milk ready to sell. So let's just have a quick look at the cows. You know, they've got a bit of food left. I have done a TMR mix, left it outside for them. Um, but we're going to bring them in anyway, so we're going to need to do another one. But you can see I've got 6,944 litres to sell, which will be at six and, half six in the morning in the next in-game day. So we're also going to get another milk in at 6 p.m. So we'll have, a, you know, a good amount. So there we go. Happy as Larry. We'll leave that like that. And we're going to take this because obviously you know, it's not the easiest thing in the world to travel with when it comes to them country lanes. I have turned traffic off as well, so we don't have to worry about that too much. Just while we're using auto drive. It's always a good good thing to do. Look, something going on with that front axle. Never seen anything like it. So that's that is strange. Why are you doing that? Is it the shovel? I've got a feeling it's the shovel. I think if we don't tie it down, it shouldn't have a negative effect and just hope it doesn't go flying, flying about. I think it definitely was the shovel. It's like catching something to do with physics. Farm sim physics. We all know what farm sim physics is like. It's just bloody brilliant. And that was an example of it. Hopefully now, we shouldn't have any issues. Right, so you can see what I mean about this mower being on the limit. I think I might actually take a bit of a shortcut here and go through the field and go through that gap there. I think that makes more sense. And the L200 is absolutely, you know, the, the L200 as well has been fine since I didn't strap down the, the, the shovel. There we go. I've been thinking as well, as I was driving then, I thought about this mower, and I probably should have left that. And the reason I say that is because I want to upgrade. With us having the, obviously, the bigger Veltra now, that's like, up to, what what was it, 400 horsepower? It's, I think it's a no-brainer now to get one of the hanging mowers on the back of the tractor. And then we can also get a front mower. And obviously we'll be doing much better, and it's easier to drive as well, so... I think that's a, a no-brainer, no-brainer. Right, so let's go first and take these and just store them. We're, we're going to do the feed mix. We'll, we'll worry about, you know, feeding the the straw to the calves. And, well, it's not feeding, it's bedding up, really, um, in the milk after. Just because it's not so important. We just need to get some feed in there, bring the cows in, and uh, obviously muck out as well, as you can see. They've been busy. They really have. But well, they've all got food still. They've just uh, done their business quite a bit. Is that a different texture for manure? I feel like that is a new texture for manure. I wonder if that's map. I wonder if that's specific to the map. I might be going mad here. Like, Is that a different texture? manure? I don't know. I think it is. I'm pretty certain of that. Hmm. Or am I just seeing things? Or I'm just completely noticing the same thing as I've always seen in game. It's an interesting one. Right, so um, we can use... Let's use this. We may as well. We can drop the mower off here. Keep the front weight on and then and even though it's blue, I mean it is made for the Ford. But, uh, at least everything's up at the farm now. But we may as well use this because it's still a decent tractor. This is 200 odd horsepower. But we're going to go and sort out feed mix. We're going to put it in there first and then we'll bring the cows in with the magic. And I say magic because it, it's pretty much magic. The cane. I'll be able to put all the cows in. All right, so that's that done. Try and figure out what we're gonna do here. We've got milk, so we should probably do the milking milking recipe, shouldn't we? I, I think that's that's what and 
that's probably the best. I mean, what have we got here in the recipe mixture? Dairy cattle. That's fine. That's what we want to do. So, as always, we'll have a quick look, but mainly it's going to be, you know, a bit of a maize salad or grass salad. You can do a combination of that. We've got some hay to stick in there as well. That's going to be the bulk of it, but we can top it up with, you know, potatoes or sugar beet cut or anything like that if we add it. So we're just probably going to be doing a salad and hay mix. Just keep it simple. Um, I think that's probably the best bet, definitely. With us having no sugar beet cut or anything like that at the minute, we may as well uh, do that. But you can see that I've added potatoes and potatoes cuts cut to that. With us obviously going to be doing some potato harvesting. So we can use it not only for the pigs that we're going to get as soon as we got the feed for them, we can do it with the feed mix as well. And I've put it up to 50%. So, I mean, I wouldn't go up to 50%. It just means that um, I don't have to worry about how much I'm putting in. It's basically just, say, if I went to 75%, 80% full with hay and silage, I can then just throw some whatever in, sugar beet cut, potato cut, or even just potatoes whole. Uh, but, yeah, let's go and get some maize silage first. We've got the... Yeah, we've got this here. In fact, what I'll do is I'll bring that round. It makes more sense. Definitely makes more sense, because we're not going to really need... I mean, even though it's easier to... Because I've parked that belcher there. It'd be much easier to just leave it around here. It's more efficient, really, isn't it? Right, so I think as good as any spot to park up, that should be fine. I did get a comment in the last video about this area here. Uh, someone said what probably would be better to put down there instead of um, straw, which is what I've bought, would be big bags and stuff like that. So I agree. I, I think that's a really good idea. So I might actually do that and move some of these big bags, maybe just the seeds down the side here. Then we can get access. See that? Everyone's saying as well, I saw this on a comment on my last video as well, and on the farmhand, that this auto load trailer is causing the lag. And you know what? It seems to be that. It's, it does seem to be. See that then? It's really weird. But uh, do you know what? Just so we don't have that problem, let's get this and just throw it somewhere out of the bloody way. Because uh, I don't want to be getting a bit of lag. It's not even lag, it's frame rate issues really at that point. And let's see if it improves now. If it does, then that's that confirmed that uh, 4D modding's autoload trailer causes a bit of frame rate issues. It might not be that, it might be something else in this area. I don't know, but with it being on the farmland as well, in the area I was getting frame rate. But in all fairness, on the on the farmland on court farms at the moment, I am finding I'm getting quite a lot of frame rate issues and it's not due to the map it's just due to the fact I've put so many things down already um, with Ross's area and all that stuff that's all you know me just plonking stuff down so it's a it's a lot for the save game a lot of information on there and you know I'm playing in 4k as well and it's one of them you try and find a good middle ground when it comes to quality and obviously the performance and it's, it's difficult for me to want to tune my settings down too much so I'm hoping DLSS can, can save me on that one but at the moment it's uh, not doing too good I'll be honest I probably need to upgrade really if I want to do 4k gaming and at the highest quality and recording at the same time I probably need a 4090 at the moment um, and I have got a 3090 Ti so it's not like I'm running at all a bad graphics card that's a beast of a machine but obviously the fourth generation, you know, the 40 series of cards, especially 4080 upwards, are made for 4K gaming. They really are. I mean, it even says don't buy a 4090 unless you're 4K gaming because it can actually cause a lot of bottleneck with your monitor. If you're using a 1080p monitor, playing in 1080p, and you buy a 4090, it's absolutely pointless. It really is. Because at that point, you're just bottlenecking anyway, and you don't really see any increase. You, you probably, in fact, if you're running like a 3080 and you go to a 4090, you might get less frame rates playing in 1080p than you would on your 3080. So, yeah, you can see that it is tailor-made for that 4K gaming experience, which is what, well, it's basically perfect for the channel, really, and to making good content. So it might be something I invest in, especially if I go full-time. If, if I do go full-time, I'll think of things like that, because obviously I don't want frame rate issues in my videos. Um, I'm sure everyone thinks the same. Now, I've just realised this 
is a task and off with this. So we're going to get rid of this bucket. I did get myself. Um, I think it could be that one, but I got one that was about 5,000 litres on a sheer grab. Now, obviously, I've spoke about this before. It'd be really nice to have that feature where we can see the face of the, bu uh, the bunker as we're grabbing. But I don't know. I don't know if that's going to work. I think it's this one, to be honest. It's a massive one, that is, so I'm hoping so. find out because obviously the, the mixer holds about 50,000 so we don't want to be using let's be honest a two and a half thousand litre bucket that's a task and a half we may as well yeah we may as well uh, let's put 5,000 in it's uh, much much easier I might just do May salvage on this one see me driving up there and the next one kind of do um, yeah the next one I can then obviously worry about doing grass or something just mixing it mix it up a bit so I'll probably bring this to about um, I'm just trying to think we've got 10,000 litres in it takes I'm not sure I'd have to jump in I think it takes about 50,000 so it's 20% full so yeah, I think I'll bring it up to about 50,000 on silage. Um, sorry, 50%, 50,000. 50% 50 on, on silage, and then we'll stick some hay in. So, so let me do this so it's not so too repetitive for you, and I'll, I'll get it to where we need it, and then we'll, we'll finish off by just sticking some hay in. That should be fine. Right, so let's just plonk that there. That's fine. I got it up to 30,000, so we've done a good chunk here. You can see that uh, yeah, it can go up to 50, so it's it's taking a good amount. But we need to finish off now by sticking some hay in. So uh, we're going to just undo that. Well, we should probably actually move that a little bit, just so it's easier for us to get this bale grab. I mean, uh, two bales at the moment. We'll just kind of see where we get. Probably three bales at least. Maybe four, in fact. If I can count, right? I don't know. But we'll, fi we'll figure it out. Definitely going to use hay. I mean... Hay's probably the one thing that we did well in in the end, but it does go down a, you know, a lot quicker than I'd like, and I think it just means that I'm probably going to have to use more silage or just make more hay, really. <laughs> there are only two options. Oh, too eager, too eager. Let's try that again. Thirteen thousand liters. Definitely going to need a third. Definitely going to need a third. Let's just leave them like that. See where we get to. Um, as long as that one's above twenty percent, which it's obviously going to get there very quickly, then that's fine. We'll start seeing a change soon, and which we have now. So you can see that it's actually a TMR. Let's put one more in, and that should be plenty. So how's everyone getting on with the weather? It's been really nice in the UK. I mean, if you're watching from somewhere else, I'm not entirely sure what the weather's been like for, for Europe and the rest, but in the UK, it's pretty much at the moment, every day is a nice sunny day. It's, it's It feels like I'm on holiday. Um, obviously, there's good things and bad things about it. Obviously, it's really nice, but I'm used to having a swimming pool if I'm on holiday. So, I mean, I've got no swimming pool and it's red hot. It's red hot. Going to work as well, I've got no air con my vehicle because it's an old L200 um, that I work in and it's yeah it's torture it's torture it really is at times and so what's it like for everyone else because it is nice I mean overall I'd much prefer it be like this nice and sunny unless for example I'm gaming I mean I'm out right now it's 28.9 degrees in my kind of like man cave where I've got everything set up um, I can't put a fan on and I definitely can't put an aircon on which is I'm, in itself, I'm quite lucky that I bought this aircon unit because in the UK, it's not common at all to have aircon. And I know that probably sounds crazy if you're from America where it's all, you know, everyone's got aircon built into the house and everything. 
I've just bought a standalone like kind of aircon unit. I tell you what, it'll be funny. I'll turn it on. I can't ever use this when I'm recording because it's just too loud. But I'll turn it on so you can hear what it'd be like. It's insane. I mean, it's nothing amazing. It's just a 300 pound kind of standalone aircon unit, and it's really good when I'm editing or anything like that because obviously I keep the room cool. But yeah, I'm going to turn this on now. So I don't know if you can hear that. I mean, I'd be amazed if you can't, but it's uh, it's very it's very loud, but obviously quite nice. But yeah, I was wondering if uh, how everyone else is getting on, especially PC gamers like ourselves. What's the temperature when you're gaming? Because I'm sitting in 29 degrees room. Um, no window open, obviously, because I don't want to pick up sound. Can't have a fan on or anything like that. Um, but it, it just made me think, um, I wonder what everyone else is like right now. Are they... In the same boat as me, you know, because the UK we don't we don't have aircon. I'm thinking we the way the world's going, we're gonna have to start getting aircon in this country, just like a natural thing that's in houses. I mean, the Americans have got it right with that; they really have. Right, anyway, let's stick some food in for these cows, and uh, then we can go and find the cane, and we can uh, bring the cows in. Fifty thousand liters. Be interested to see how long this lasts. I'm not hopeful it'll be long at all. I'll be honest. It's uh, the cows feed like mad with maize plus, but you know, it is more realistic. It really is for the amount of cows you've got. It's probably about realistic, but I like it because it means the feed goes down. All that hard work in the field has a reason for it now. The cows are going to need it, but we get a bigger reward. So it means that if you put the hard work in, obviously sooner you get more reward sooner as well so there's, there's a quicker chance to get to like you know the better equipment and so on uh, but it just takes a lot of hard work with the feed required right so there we go that's all the 50,000 litres that we had all in there that'll tie the cows over for probably a day maybe a little bit more to be honest probably like two days um, so at least we got that sorted out now Where's the cane? Now that is the question, really. Where did I leave that? This is why I'd like it. Just here. Be perfect. Absolutely perfect. Now I don't know if I left it up on the other top bit. I probably did. I mean, I should remember, really. It's not even been that long. It has been a difficult week, though. It has. I've been really busy this week. Obviously, working. It's been hot. Um, there we go. There's the animal cane. bit of news on the farmhand this weekend i'm only actually going to get chance to make one farmhand video which is you know not normal i usually like to make two but i am only going to get chance to make the one and that is just because obviously with it being so nice recently weather wise i just want to make the most of it and i've made a few plans with my little lad and uh, the family in general so i'm just going to go and yeah soak up the weekend a bit so my aim is to get the video made tomorrow and hopefully released on Saturday. If I've not edited it in time, I'll do the editing early in the morning, so that means it'll come out Sunday, but yeah, only one Farman video this weekend. Speaking of the Farman as well, I get a lot of comments about people asking me, who does the voices? Now, I don't know if you believe me or not, but I actually do the voices for George, Ross, Tim, Tony, all of the, all of the male characters. It's only Beanie that I don't do. I mean, that would be hilarious if I tried, but I don't. Um, so, for example, Ross, I d you got to remember, I do use a software called S uh, Adobe Audition. It's basically like, obviously, you know, there's Photoshop, Adobe. There's also Premiere Pro for video editing. Well, there's another one for audio, um, which is it's how I record my audio. So I'm recording right now in Adobe Audition, separate to using the NVIDIA software in the graphics card to record the video. So you, the video and the gameplay sounds are being recorded in the v NVIDIA software. But my audio, I actually separate out and use Adobe Audition. Um, and then I, when I'm editing, I bring them together. So when I do Ross, hey, are you okay? My name's Ross. That's me doing Ross. And I use, I just make the voice a bit deeper. So it's not altered the st or stretched it or anything. It's just made the voice a bit deeper. Whereas George is pretty much, it's it's a lot like me, but it just from, I'm just like talking like my dad, basically. Uh, which is, um, stop faffing. Hey, my name's George. What the bloody hell are you doing? That's me talking like George right now. And then, obviously, I, I put the deeper voice onto it. 
So I just wanted to point that out because, yeah, I've had a lot of people ask me, who does the voice for George? And it's me. It's, uh, it's me just pretending to be my dad as he moans at me, which is uh, it's always my fault with my dad. So most of the character creation comes from my dad. Um, it's also from a guy. This is true. I don't know if I've said this before, but it's also... I used to work in a dairy um, as a in, a in a laboratory testing the raw milk as it come in. So I test the raw milk in the mornings. All the milk tankers are coming from the farms, and I'd be testing the milk there. I was only a 17-year-old lad at this time, so uh, yeah, it was uh, quite a few years ago now. And uh, there was a guy um, in. It was a the tanker room where this all this raw milk could get pumped to. He was in this tanker room, and um, he would obviously pasteurize it sort it out and send it to different parts of the dairy so say for example you know it was getting turned into semi-skinned or whole milk or they were skimming it even more to make cream or whatever it was this guy his name was mick <laughs> he used to yeah just speak to me over a radio and i never actually saw his face ever but he used to sit there so there'd be like a walkie-talkie and i'd tell him over the radio the fat content of this raw milk that's just come in is this percentage so 4.5 percent for example, an L lad here on the radio is it just go, Rado, and that's all I'd hear off this guy called Mick. So I kind of thought in my head, George is basically my dad moaning at me all the time, dead awkward, you know how the George character is, and then he's actually this character. He's the guy I used to work with at the dairy that I never actually saw his face. So he's there behind it with his little walkie-talkie going, Rado, that's, that's pretty much George now he was created. So, yeah, just a little bit of a backstory there, if you wanted to know. I mean, it was completely random. But, yeah, uh, it's funny how uh, these things, you know, influence what, uh, how you create these stories, which I, I've always thought a good story is uh, worth a lot. So, uh, hopefully everyone's enjoying the series, really. Uh, but, yeah, only one Farman video this weekend. That was the basic gist of that conversation. Right, so before we go off and obviously sort out the weeds in the field, that'll be the last task we do in the video, just wanted to point out where we're at now with here. So you can see that the milk obviously gone down, but we'll start making slurry and uh, the feed is pretty much all right. I mean, it's just under halfway, so that'll tie them over for a little bit, but their production should, well, productivity will hopefully go up. So we're taking a little bit of hit here because we're obviously not going to be producing any milk if any yeah well well they're obviously waiting for that go up so i'm hoping within an hour of gameplay or within an hour in the game it should just shoot up a bit for us there because we are you know they've got tmr they're all happy uh but yeah it's nice to know we got a bit of slurry that'll come in as well as well as the muck because we don't get that out in the pasture um, because they're pretty much just putting it all out on the ground um let's have a quick look as well as our stock check uh see where we're at so you can see that we still got that thirty-five thousand liters of soybeans that we're going to sell in july that'll be a nice bit of cash there we can put that off on one of the loans we've got and uh wool as well may so we should probably hold off really because you can see we're at 1400 we can get it up to two and you know, two two grand so it makes sense to hold as much wool till may time so that'll be good um, and milk is actually a really good time to sell it has gone down a bit but you know, November, October time, maybe September as well, are good times to sell milk. So we're doing all right with that regard. We want to try and get as much sold as possible. Um, so it's good that we're now producing milk this time of year. Um, and then everything else here is just pretty much our stock. So we're not going to be doing anything with that. Now, if we have a quick look at our loan, you can see that we have paid off um, one more term. So it has gone down a little bit. We're at 58 left. So, you know... <laughs> A little bit obviously still to pay but we're doing all right i mean for the amount of money we've put into that tractor that's that's well worth it and then obviously with the improvements to the farm that's also been worth it so we're doing all right we're doing all right we'll we'll, we'll get that down definitely um so i'm all set up to go i am going to be using the smaller voucher for this just because it's a mechanical weeder it's not massive i have changed the weight because obviously with us having a weight that was blue it just didn't really fit well so i'll go with this one uh, but yeah let's get this sorted we're not going to do any crop damage as well, so we don't need to worry about tyres. It is just away we go, this, and uh, try my best to use a bit of GPS as well throughout the field because it's not the easiest thing to see where you've been. Some of these tasks are made for, like, course play, for example. 
But uh, let's go around the field once, just to... In fact, yeah, let's go around the field once. Lift that up, we'll go... There we go. And then we can see these disappear, which is going to be great, because, like I said, we're going to take, um, you know, a lot less a hit now. And we're also clearing away some of the, the grass at the side, which will help us when we see the crop. Hopefully it doesn't grow back. It will grow back, actually, in the time frame, but, uh, yeah, at least... Uh, so that's pretty irrelevant, but, you know, we can see where we've planted up to, at least. Now, I'm going to do this on a time-lapse again. It is a big field, especially for this size weed. It's not massive at all. I mean, it's a, we could have leased out the big one, and it, again, it's not even a massive requirement. We could have sold this one and then leased out the bigger one. Might be a good idea to do that, really, with us having fields that, you know, are pretty big. Especially this one, now being the biggest field. We'll, we'll, we'll see how we get on. If we do, I can always go and get the other one, but uh, I'm quite happy with this at the moment. The main thing is it's just removing the, uh, the weeds.
Right, there we go job done the field has been sorted out so there's no more weeds in that was a pretty long task with that weeder don't get me wrong that weeder would probably be fine for all the other fields but because i've combined these three together we're definitely going to invest into a, a different weeder um, probably something maybe not too big just because i, I want to then probably you know still use it in the other fields uh, but that in itself with with it being a, a a, a tool that we only need a small amount of horsepower for we should definitely uh, invest in uh, getting a bigger one but yeah overall not too bad i mean it's been a productive episode really we teed ourselves off now to move over into obviously next year we'll get through the winter months in between this episode and the next uh, it'll just mainly be me feeding cows and just taking in money from from milk so hopefully when when we come back we'll have a lot more f uh, money but also we'll have less feed and then we can start working and planting in the maize and so on. And we'll get into the next year. But I, I think now we'll definitely just skip through because it's just going to be mainly feeding, mucking out, you know, the cars and all that kind of stuff that uh, we've done, you know, quite a bit of. And we don't want it to be get dead, dead repetitive. So, yeah, we'll definitely move over to maybe February. We'll probably take it the month before and a bit of a recap. If not, if there's not much to do in February, we'll just go straight to March when we're going to start planting in. Uh, but yeah, on that note, I am going to leave the video there though. So thanks for watching. I really do appreciate it. Hopefully you have enjoyed it. If you have, please give the video a thumbs up because that does help my channel out. And if you're new, don't forget to hit that subscribe button for more videos just like this one on Farming Simulator.